Good evening, dear parishioners, and thank you for joining me today as we delve into the timeless wisdom of the scriptures. Today, I want to reflect on a profound passage from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 to 16, which speaks of being the salt and light of the world. Let's start with a story from real life, one that many of us can relate to in today's world. It's the story of a young woman named Maya from our own Kerala, India. Maya was a diligent student, pursuing her studies in a prestigious university. Despite the immense pressure to conform to the norms of society, she stood firm in her Christian faith and values. In the face of rising corruption and moral decay in her college, Maya decided to take a stand. She started a campaign against academic dishonesty and initiated discussions on ethical behavior among her peers. She was like a beacon of light in the darkness, a reminder that integrity and honesty should never be compromised. Her actions not only transformed her college but also inspired many to uphold their values. Now, let's turn our attention to the passage from Saint Matthew. Jesus tells us, you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. What does this mean for us, especially in the context of Kerala and the world today? Salt, in its essence, adds flavor and preserves. As Christians, we are called to bring the richness of Christ's teachings to the world. We are meant to infuse our society with love, compassion, and justice. Just as salt preserves food from decay, we must work to preserve the moral fabric of our society. But we are not just salt, we are also called to be the light. Light illuminates the darkness, and our faith should illuminate the path of righteousness. It reminds me of another passage from the Bible, in the book of Isaiah chapter 58 verse 10, where we are called to spend ourselves on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed. Street Ephraim, one of the great church fathers, beautifully said, a Christian who does not strive to become the salt of the earth and the light of the world ceases to be a Christian. In today's context, we cannot ignore the challenges that our beloved Kerala faces, such as environmental concerns, social injustices, and economic disparities. Pope Francis, in his encyclical, Laudato Si, reminds us that caring for our common home is a moral duty. We must be the light that leads the way in protecting our environment, ensuring justice for all, and uplifting the marginalized. As we reflect on these teachings, let us remember Maya's story. Just like her, each one of us can be the salt and light in our own way. By standing up for what is right, by extending love and compassion to our neighbors, by caring for our environment, and by advocating for justice, we fulfill our divine calling. In conclusion, let me leave you with a quote from the early church father, Street. John Chrysostom, let your speech be better than silence, otherwise be silent. Let us go forth from this place, being the salt and light of our beloved Kerala, enriching it with the flavors of love, compassion, and justice, and illuminating the world with the brilliance of our faith. May God bless you all, and may we continue to shine as beacons of hope and love in our world. Thank you. വചനവയൽ ആപ്പ് എക്കാലത്തെയും വചന പഠനത്തിനുള്ള ബൈബിൾ ക്വിസുകൾക്കുള്ള ഉത്തമ സഹായം ഇന്നു തന്നെ ഗൂഗിൾ പ്ലേ സ്റ്റോറിൽ നിന്ന് വചനവയൽ ആപ്പ് ഡൗൺലോഡ് ചെയ്ത് വിവിധ ക്വിസുകൾക്കായി പഠിക്കാൻ ഈ ബുക്കുകൾ സ്വന്തമാക്കൂ ലോഗോസ് ക്ലബ് അംഗത്വമെടുത്ത് ലോഗോസിനായി ഒരുങ്ങാം വചനവയൽ യൂട്യൂബ് ചാനൽ സബ്സ്ക്രൈബ് ചെയ്ത് മത്സര റിസൾട്ടുകൾ ആദ്യമറിയാം ഡബ്ല്യു 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 ഡോട്ട് വചനവയൽ ഡോട്ട് കോം എന്ന സൈറ്റിലും ഈ ആപ്പ് ലഭ്യമാണ് എക്കാലത്തെയും ബൈബിൾ ക്വിസുകൾക്കും സഭാവിജ്ഞാന ക്വിസുകൾക്കും പരീക്ഷകൾക്കും വേദപാഠ പരീക്ഷകൾക്കും സഹായിക്കുന്ന ഒരു ലക്ഷത്തിന് പരം ചോദ്യോത്തരങ്ങൾ എക്കാലത്തെയും ബൈബിൾ ക്വിസുകൾക്കായുള്ള പഠന സഹായം വചനമയം ആപ്പ്